Hey, Rob here. Welcome to Buster Creek Outdoors. Today we're going to do part three of sewing up our beaver mitts on the old Bowness fur machine. Let's get started. Here's the machine we're going to use today. The old Bowness Never Stop fur machine. It's a A model. And today, the only thing different I'm using today is this is a furrier thread. It's a glazed thread. But on like a beaver's beaver mitts and heavier leather and heavier fur, I like to switch it up to a different different uh, thread. So I'm using this here is a. It's a glazed thread too. It's a, an upholstery thread. So it's super strong. It works really well on the heavier stuff. Whereas the actual furrier thread, it busts. It breaks lots with the uh, heavier fur. But some people say I shouldn't use it in this machine. It wasn't designed for it, but it works just fine. And I have eliminated busting thread nonstop and pretty much eliminated busting needles too. But here's the old girl here. There's your foot pedal down here, push it down opens the wheels up push her the other way and she's in go-go gear and then there's a little dial over here loosen it and you can move it that gives you a tighter stitch back here it gives you a a looser stitch well your stitch is always tight it just uh, opens up your stitching so it's not tight close to each other and opens it up the other way yeah then the old girl she has all your little oiler point does take a while to get used to them. They really take off and they go fast when you don't want them to sometimes. Well, there's the machine for today. Well, now we have our patterns all cut out. Let's do the final steps and making sure everything's organized before we sew it together. Here's our leather with our small lineup marks. There's our lineup marks on the fur side. And then we'll just go and make sure that we have it. So this is gonna be for our left hand. And then this would be in the inside. Left is there. And then this here is gonna to go to this side. So it blends nice instead of onto the long fur and the light fur. And then this will be the underside. So these are the pieces we're going to work on for this mitt. And this is going to be the outside. And the fur is the outside. So outside to outside. And then we got our lineup mark on the outside, or the inside, and the lineup mark there. 
we'll start sewing there and then we'll bring it down to here we'll probably maybe start sewing at a spot here just do the lineup marks and then sew in between well let's get started well now we have our two pieces of leather our piece of leather and a piece of fur line up marks open the discs up now we're ready i like to start giving it one through first and then And then you go back through one time, pull it, and stop just before it loses the, strip, the stitch. Grab, pull a little slack, pull it down, and then set this set the stitch. Now I'll come down to this lineup mark. I like to do that first one by hand just because sometimes you might hit a hard spot in the leather or in the hide and it'll make your needle deflect one way or the other and it'll hit the side and then bust the needle. So that's a good way to do it and not bust a whole bunch of needles. Use whatever you have handy to poke your fur back down if it's sticking up. Now we'll come back up and do this piece. Keep it so that all the fur is tucked in. There's this half done. Start on this side. So I'm going to start here at the thumb and do my first mark. I'm not going to come right up to the mark. I'll stay back a little bit because my thumb has to tie into here too. Now 
Now this here looks like we have a bit more material on the fur side than the leather. So we could take the leather and give it a little stretch. And we'll sew the same direction we were. getting closer to the end and you can see the material difference now there is more material on the fur side than there is the leather because we're tight here and it's bellied here so you can take it and hold the leather in your fingers tight and leave the the fur side a little looser. It'll kind of bunch your leather up a bit. It'll take the slack out. Set your stitch. Then you just go along after and trim all your threads off. Then just check everything over. Here's a little spot I might have to go back over. That I missed the, the leather on the hair side. I'll do it right now. That's for that part. Now, let's do the thumb. And then on this pattern here, I got it. Your thumb will sew into here. And then this here is up into this corner. And then this here is the start of your lineup mark on the leather, on the fur side. And your leather will join in after. And then on the thumb, I'll like to uh, open my stitch up a little bit. And my stitch is not so tight. It has a little bit more... little more room in between the stitches and it doesn't get the material quite as 
like tight tight as this stitch here because this this seam now is it's uh it's fairly hard and it would be kind of noticeable if you had it in the end of your thumb you'd always be feeling it and i like to keep both of my leathers fairly fairly snug as i'm going through And that's as far as I'll go there for now. Just in case I get down to the corner or down to the end of the mitt and I've and I have uh, extra material I have to get rid of. So I like to start like all my all my lineup points and the corners and whatnot. as far as I'll go there too. Now I'll come and sew this piece together first, next. Cause it's easier to sew in between after. You don't want to sew all the way to the end or you'll end up with, you know, be way too short or it might be way too long. So do your end seams. first before you get down you know sew your starts and your middles and your ends and then sew in between I might just finish this by hand. With the wheel. So now we just have this piece to do. And if we've got too much material or not enough, we might sew on this side or this side to close it up, but it looks pretty good. Then we got this thumb. But I always like to give the leather a, a good bit of a stretch before I get going on it. And then too, if you're starting in one of your stitches, it's always best to roll the wheel by hand to get it going so your needle doesn't hit a stitch and want to flex one way or the other and it hits here or here and it doesn't go perfectly through the your slot it'll bust the needle I'm probably going to stop it there. And I'll come back and have a look here. And then we'll split the what we have left at the top of the thumb. We'll take it and we'll put it, we'll split it half and half. See, we got a little extra material on the first side here and a little there. So we'll just split it. We'll start right in the middle. And 
And then, like I say, you hold your leather tight and let your other material loose, be loose, and it'll, it'll suck it up so you're not left with a ugly seam. I tell you this first sometimes. All I'm using is a pair of tweezers. See, we're closing the closing her up pretty quick there. Same with this side. Start back on my stitch a little bit by hand a couple. To poke fur down, all I'm using is just a pair of tweezers because I use the tweezers lots when I have to re-thread the needle. This piece here left and it looks like we have more on the fur side than the leather so we're gonna start from this side Went over half a quarter of an inch from where I ended, overlapped our seams. There's our thumb completed. Now our next step is gonna be to join this, the underside. And on this side here, I like to start by going an inch, inch from each end. And then I'll decide which way I'm gonna sew it after, cause there's gonna be extra material. There always is. Even though your pattern is the same when you cut everything out. So I'm close to the end here. I might just finish it off by hand. Because the machine goes awfully fast sometimes when you don't want it to. And then there we have it. Okay, you can see we got way more material on this side than we do here. So we could try to stretch this leather side of the fur out just a little bit, which it helped a little bit, but we will sew from this side. Start back quarter inch. And then same thing here, I can hold this leather tight. And let pull this leather tight and leave this looser <laughs> I 
So I just screwed up. Let's go back. So let's reverse this, go backwards. There, it just dropped the, dropped the thread. We're gonna pull the needle back through. We're gonna open the discs and we're gonna pull. It will all come apart what you just sewed if you don't set your stitch. So I was just sewing from this side. I needed to be sewing from this side. To pick up the slack. kind of get into this join here and I'm gonna just do it by hand that's a good spot because the material kind of bunches here sometimes and it's tends to bust your thread or bust the needle there <laughs> Threads all bunched up on here now. Come on. some technical difficulties so there we're sewed there now let's we're gonna do same thing here we're gonna sew the bottom inch up Same thing here, it looks like we have more material on this side. So we'll start sewing from the bottom towards the top. Have some of this extra piece of thread out of our way here. Just keep tucking your fur in. So this piece here has a little extra leather sticking out. Let's just trim that off so it doesn't get in our way. Mm -hmm. 
she's coming along pretty quick these fur machines they were designed for this and man do they work great i used to hand sew everything with a sewing awl which is fine it worked great it still does work great give that first one a, with your hand And a lot of times I'll come back and I'll re sew the inch again just so it could never come apart. And we got this piece here with our thumb. Now we want to start up here. And get our mark lined up. Now this is pretty hard. I can feel it with the tension with the pushing the needle through right now by hand. Sometimes it might be a good idea to go over stuff and trim some threads off before you get going on the next section sometimes because yeah, they just seem to seem to get tangled up and stuff especially if they're a long a long tail piece of thread hanging there As we get closer here, at this next seam, we might want to just roll through by hand, just because the material wants to bunch up there and it's a little thicker, and plus you're going to be stitching through your other seam that you sewed. Any of them hard spots like that, it's very easy to bust the needles. There you have it, one mitt all sewn up. We'll flip it around and see what it looks like on the other side. So there she be. Go along and trim all these loose threads off. All your starts and stops and going this direction and that direction but you got to do it to keep everything going and in, in a nice order 
Because if you didn't, if you just started sewing here and just sewed all the way to the bottom, you might end up with this piece being an inch shorter now. Or, you know, the other, the other way. This would be the inch longer. So you need to line everything up and sew here, sew here, you know, sew here, sew at the top, and then sew in between. And then I like to start with the thumb when I turn them. It's kind of like this seam here in the thumb. You want to get it kind of flattened back out. When it's up in there. And reach up in there and pull the front. And I like to put my finger, my fingertips up in this along the seam and push. Try and push that seam, flatten that seam a bit. And just drag your hand along there and then your thumb you could take a sharpie use it up in there push it up along the seam flatten her out there we have her one beautiful beaver gauntlet and then here we go on the side where your thumb material is because on the beaver if we would have done it the other way it would have wouldn't have blended very nice with the the longer fur and the darker fur so we stayed on the belly side That blended pretty nice, them two together. Give it a bit of brushing. Hardly even see the seam. The thumbs they turn out pretty nice with this style of pattern there's lots of room and like these are pretty big they're 17 or i think they're 17 inches long these ones now the next part of this series is going to be the liners creating the liner and then attaching the liner to the mitt Thanks for watching. If you like my content, give me a like and subscribe. Thank you.